House Speaker Nancy Pelosi now for weeks. The Speaker trying to play petty political games with this nation and the State of the Union and the President. By the way, what is she fighting for? The President's fighting life and death. The President's fighting safety and security. Well, she has barred the president from performing his constitutional duty in the House chamber, making her the first speaker in U.S. history to ever do so. Now, she refused to compromise on budget negotiations, wouldn't even come to the table to talk about any kind of deal. She's been too busy on her luxurious vacations, other Democrats on a lobbyist paid junket, again, luxurious locations and resorts, planning taxpayer funded excursions around the globe, and to even talk to the president, who has offered dramatic compromises, things she has said over the years she wants, and she has no time for that. But today, the president, he rose above her bitter, petty, partisan gamesmanship. He postponed the State of the Union. Some seem upset by this. They want the president to go to an alternative location, but I think it's a bad idea. Why? Because the president, to give up the grandeur, giving the State of the Union in the House chamber, Mr. Speaker, the president of the United States. That is a powerful moment. You have congressmen and women and senators literally staking out their seats so they can shake the president's hand 14 hours ahead of time. No other place can match that symbolic location, the grandeur, and this president deserves nothing less, and I'm sure that will happen in the near future. This is about so much more, though, than politics. This is about your safety, your security. This is about the safety of the country and literally life and death. Now, this is about a president fulfilling a promise to secure our southern border. This is about saving American lives that are impacted by gangs, cartels, drugs, violence. This life and death. People are dying. 90% of that heroin that gets into this country comes from that border. It's about 10,000 new migrants now obtaining visas from the government of Mexico to travel through the country in order to make their way north into our country because we have unsecured borders. Now, when the U.S. government is reopened, the president will hold his State of the Union where it belongs in the House chambers with members of both parties hopefully present. In the meantime, the shutdown does continue. The president has been unrelenting, fighting to make the country safer. Democrats continue to feed their insatiable appetite, this pathological hatred, this division that they have. And, of course, it's always about a desire for power. And breaking tonight, the White House is reportedly now drafting a national emergency order and allocating $7 billion for that wall that would require zero congressional approval. And today, the president reassured Americans that he will get guaranteed funds for the wall one way or another. Let's take a look. Well, one of the ideas suggested is they open it, they pay a sort of a, a prorated down payment for the wall, which I think people will agree that you need. You need the wall. I have other alternatives if I have to, and I'll use those alternatives if I have to. Uh, we want to go through the system. Uh, we have to have a wall in this country. We have criminals pouring into our country. We have no choice but to have a wall or a barrier. And if we don't have that, it's just not going to work. Again, I ask, what is Nancy Pelosi fighting for? What's in the best interest of the country? Now, President Trump remains ready, willing to negotiate with the Democratic leadership. The White House doors, they're wide open. He's willing to compromise, as he has shown time and again. He's even willing to take a prorated funding rate for the wall for a short period of time, give Congress, again, another chance to do their job and find a resolution. But if the stalemate continues, it's obvious. If Democrats refuse to come to the table. The president is clear he will declare a national emergency and solve the problem himself. It may take some time to fight in the courts, but in my opinion, he will win. And by the way, that will happen. Unfortunately, as we showed you last night, Nancy Pelosi seems to be standing for nothing but being against Trump. During the height of budget negotiations, she and several other top Democrats, they tried to slip away for that seven days overseas junket courtesy of you, the taxpayer, and, of course, nothing new for Pelosi. Look at this. According to Judicial Watch, during her last term as Speaker, she racked up a massive travel bill with the U.S. Air Force. Over a two-year period, she spent more than $2 million of your money on air travel, 100000 of which was in-flight expenses. That means food and booze for all those politicians for working so hard, like half the year. Uh, thankfully, the president put the kibosh on her most recent overseas junket. And today, we did send 
Fox News contributor, our friend Lawrence Jones, to the streets of New York City to see what Americans really think about the radical, extreme, socialist, Democratic speaker, Nancy Pelosi, and her so-called leadership. Let's take a look. Trump is the first president in American history to be disinvited from the State of the Union. Right. How do you feel about that? Well, I can't believe it. I do you feel like it's disgraceful? It. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I cannot believe that ever happened in the United States. To try to cancel something because of your politics, you're not Don't honoring you anyone. Wrong? Well, yeah, it's wrong. I think Nancy Pelosi is doing the right thing because Donald Trump is destroying this country by um, his rhetoric and his racism and a million other things. And I think Nancy Pelosi is the voice of reason in this country. Do you feel like Nancy Pelosi was wrong? Yes. I believe the president should attend. It should be his choice whether or not he wants to attend or not attend. What he's doing to this country is an abomination and people's rights, human rights are being violated. What, what human rights are being violated? What human rights? Yeah, tell me. Um, the list goes, don't fill me, the list goes on and on. <laughs> now, she said that this was because of security, but well, they said that's not true. Did she tell a lie? Uh, no, she said she had con security concerns, Yeah. which I believe she probably does, um, as the president But she did didn't talk well. to the necessary people to figure that out. That doesn't matter. Do you think it's eroding the institution? I mean, this doesn't mean that you agree with the president on everything, but this is his report card to the country and to Congress, right? Well, it's, it looks so childish, you know. And uh, I believe that th th that was a terrible thing that uh, Nancy Pelosi did to the president. For her to cancel that and go against the Constitution speaks, speaks volumes. So yeah. is she throwing a temper tantrum of her own right now? Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Nancy Pelosi should take a meeting with the president and get some type of package done? Of course done? she should. That's her job. Do your job. Just do your job. Pouting a good question. Oh, what human rights are being violated? Um, they're being violated, whatever they are, they're, they're violated. You can't make this up. Of course, that's New York City, California, New York, not exactly representing red state America. Anyway, sadly, Nancy and Chuck are now being controlled by the most radical, the most extreme elements in the new Socialist Democratic Party. Uh, these are the same far-left individuals who are now playing kingmakers in the upcoming 2020 presidential primary. And that brings us to tonight's Hannity Watch report on the 2020 race. We see nearly every single Democrat who's announced their candidacy, the first thing they do is... I got to apologize for this c c position I had that may sound conservative or you'll hate me. You had Kirsten Gillibrand. She apologized for one supporting the Second Amendment. Then you have Tulsi Gabbard apologizing for her mixed track record on social issues. Yet somehow we're still waiting on Elizabeth Warren's apology for faking and benefiting from the lie of saying she's a Native American. Warren did, however, find some time to propose brand new taxes right there. Check it out. She's always finding new and creative ways to pick your pocket and penalize Americans that she describes as wealthy. Somehow she wants to take that money and redistribute it. And meanwhile, one of Warren's 2020 primary opponents, Senator Kamala Harris, is spending her time raising an enormous amount of money, buying up all the Facebook ads that she can find and, of course, trashing the president. And she wants him to open up Trump Tower as a shelter to the victims of the shutdown. Um, there are other people that own those units. He actually sold them. They're not his. Take a look. People are worried about eviction. You know what? Listen, I, you know what I think should happen? If the president feels this strongly about it, then open up the Trump Tower and let everybody be, it, sit in, live in there rent free. <laughs> and then maybe we can start having a discussion. <laughs> I mean, February... I bet he's got some rules. February 1st is going to be rent day for a lot of people who yes. rely on yes. checks and from... It's, it's supposed no to be a good job. No matter. All right, Kamara, uh, Kamala Harris is a member of Congress. She can open up her home. Nancy Pelosi is a multi-multi-millionaire. What do we see when we sent Lawrence to her district? Needles, feces, homeless people everywhere. Why didn't she build the homeless shelter there? Oh, that's right. They're only generous with your money. Now, like uh, you said, it's not a joking matter in this sense. In the coming weeks, this crop of Democrats vying to replace President Trump is likely to get bigger and bigger, but the moderates are nowhere to be found.